Hi guys. It's Ruthie and Clay here. We're actually on the way to the Syracuse area doing some running around some errands. And we thought we would take this time to answer your questions that you guys had about the quail. And so enjoy the landscape. If you've never been to upstate New York, this is going from... This is definitely not New York City like everybody exactly. thinks. This is going... People say New York and they think New York City, skyscrapers, buildings. We don't have that. We have trees, snow, and animals. Farms. And, well, they do have, like, little towns. Yeah, but they're nothing like what people think New York is. So you can enjoy the scenery as we answer your questions. Okay, and, and you can kind of see what upstate New York looks like. Yeah. Okay. It's a nice place to, nice place to visit, but the taxes are so high, you won't want to live here. Yeah, because we get high, really high taxes because New York City is associated with us. We're one of the... Uh, third highest tax rates in the U.S. But it's absolutely beautiful here. I enjoy it. I love it. I we do. I live love with it. the taxes. You're right. We do live with the taxes, and some people don't have taxes, but you can have as much as uh, probably probably the lowest price in this area for taxes is two thousand. Probably the highest is probably about six. Just so you know, a year. Okay, and on with the questions. And on with the questions. Okay, first question comes from Digital Mobile Post. He has a few questions for you, Clay. Do quail bonk each other on the head like eagles? Yes, it's called a pecking order. Um, the dominant animal, bird, wolf, whatever, the dominant will show his authority and peck the other ones that are, do what they have to do to show that they're in command. But yes, it will happen, but once they get established to who's who at the zoo, they tend to not be so aggressive to the other ones. Would you ever raise turkeys? Yes, I raise turkeys right now. Um, we raised uh, several babies last year. We'll probably raise a few this year. Because like the quail, I eat the turkeys too. Okay. Why do you need a license for one, meaning probably Bob White, and the other type, which is Quartornix? So why would you have to have a license for one and not the other? Well, Quartornix, to start with, are not a United States bird. They're from Africa and Egypt and they're not native to, you, to the United States, where bobwhite quail are. And any bird that's native to the United States, like uh, eagles or pheasants or partridge or anything like that, you can't own them without a permit. Okay. What do you do with the animals when you're on vacation? Well, first off, we don't normally go on vacation. If we go away, it's usually for the day. And I make sure that the animals' feeders and waters are full before I leave. And the feeders and waters I have will last them two to three days. So I don't have a problem with that. Okay. Our next question comes from Fossil Makers. Did you order by mail? Yes, I ordered the quail from eggs. They don't ship live baby quail in the mail because they're so tiny. If you look at your thumb, and that shows you how big these quail are when they're new hatched. They're very small, and they wouldn't take the, the mail order like baby chicks or ducks or turkeys could. If you're worried about them dying in the mail, don't worry about that. If you do lose any, you might lose one in the mail, but it's because it wasn't healthy enough to ship in the first place. They have enough yolk in their bellies that will last them 24 to 72 hours without food and water when they do hatch. But if you're worried about it, the hatchery sell a gelatin form that goes, and they put it in the box with the chicks. It's kind of green colored, and the chicks peck at that if they're hungry and it keeps them established. But one cautionary, or one thing, when you order chicks, make sure that 
their shipping dates are Monday through Thursday, so that when they ship them, it may take two to three days before you get them, which you need to feed and water them immediately once you get them. And we can go into details on that when we do another video on the eggs, shipping eggs, of what to do with them. But don't worry about babies, just make sure that they, you get them ordered so that they're shipped on Monday through Thursday and you'll be fine. Okay, now K&A Families Homestead has kind of a three part question, maybe four, I'll have to look into it All more. Right, just ask the question, babe. Okay, I have four quail and I am not sure what to do for them. How do I set them up to have a successful fertile eggs? How do I set them up to have successful fertile eggs? Well, you have to make sure you have males and females. You want... Do you think that might have heavy... <laughs> I'm just messing with the clay. Do you think they might what? They need to have males and females, yes. Okay, got it. Got All right, you. you want a ratio of one male to four to five females. There you go. Now, the females' breasts are spotted. They're black and brown spotted. The male's breast is kind of a chestnut brown, and he has a white stripe under his on his cheek. So, and they'll make a, a crowing sound. It's not crowing like a rooster, but it's it's like a wild bird. You'll you'll hear it if you know you've got It's a got very them. pretty sound too. It's a nice sound, and it, your neighbors won't even know you have quail. They think it's a a bird out in the trees that makes that sound. So if you've got one male and a couple of females, you'll have fertile eggs. But you want to make sure that if you're going to set those eggs in an incubator, you want to do it before day five because your fertility rate drops. And you want to make sure that the, the hens are still laying good and that they're two to three years old at the max, maybe four so that they're still laying eggs at a regular basis. They want to know the proce process to getting them hatching. Well, I'm not going to get into that right now, but when we do a vi we're going to do a video on the um, chicks and eggs, and we'll do that all in one uh, video. Also, how do I know if the eggs are fertile? Like I said, if you've got a male and some females, you'll notice they're fertile because the male will mount the females. Also, can't you candle them? Candling to find out if they're fertile isn't going to tell you anything. Candling is only good for after they've sat for in the incubator for a few days. So after they're in the incubator, if you get dogs... Can, then you can tell if they're fertile or not. We'll go into that when we do the other video. Okay. You don't want to slam it all into one video. Oh, I know, but but that was a good... Those it's are a good, good question. We'll yeah. hang on to that part. Okay. Liz's Homestead says, what kind of quail are these? These are Coturnic quail, which are, like I've said before, are not native to the United States, but lots and lots of people have them and grow them. Our Coturnic quail are jumbo. Uh, regular Coturnic quail get weights of 8 ounces to maybe 10 to 11 ounces tops. And, and let the, me... the jumbos that I have mm -hmm. will get anywhere from 14 ounces to 16 ounces, averaging usually 13 to 14 ounces. And let me insert this in here as I am the city girl, and actually I came from this little town right here, Baldwinsville. But uh, let me insert this in here. It's kind of backwards because things that are native are the things you have to have licenses for, not the things that are out of the country. I've already mentioned that. Oh, okay, well, anyway, I'm sorry, Mom. But uh, it's just kind of backwards, so to me it is. Well, it not really, because uh, the state regulates your, your wildlife. And if anybody could have a, a, a deer in their backyard and feeding it in a, in a fence, that's not... Uh, and then two years from now, they butcher the thing. That's not right. 
So that's why the the United States regulates wildlife. Make sense? Makes sense to me. Okay, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing your names right. If I'm not, guys, please forgive me. I'm trying to do the best I can, but you know, sometimes I just mess up. But my heart is in the right place. Okay, Von Chili or Von Chili? What do quail eggs taste like? Quail eggs taste like, uh, well, you've had chicken eggs, and if you've ever boiled chicken eggs, you'll, you can taste or smell kind of a sulfury smell or taste. You know what that smell is. You don't have that with quail eggs. Um, chicken eggs are fine, they're good, but quail eggs have a more creamier texture taste if you have pickled quail eggs you'll know the difference you'll you'll taste the difference in um, the taste of the pickled quail egg compared to the pickled chicken egg or fried even uh, fried egg has that strong flavor quail eggs don't well let me interject this too ladies Quail eggs are a delicacy. They are smooth and creamy, and that is there's a reason they are six dollars a dozen. They are really, really good. They're more of a delicacy, so they're super, super good. As now, as far as creamy and very gentle. Let me taste. put something in there too. People have hatched quail eggs from the store. You're not going to get a 100% hatch, but they have done that, and they've hatched out several chicks. So if you're going to set quail eggs from the store, which I don't recommend, I recommend you get them from a, a reputable farmer or dealer. Here's my notes. I kind of scribbled. Okay, don't worry about the notes. What's your next question, dear? All right. My next question is, let's see here. Late hatches. Late hatches. Uh, we're going to get into that with the other video, but um, let me go. When your chicks are due to hatch, from the time that the first chick pops out of the egg, he will call and move the eggs around in the incubator, and the other chicks will pop out within usually six to eight hours after that, and they'll pop out on, in uh, big groups. What I recommend is when the first chick hatches, 24 to 72 hours after that first, and mark it down, they hatch at 8, eight o'clock, and if he hatches at 8 o'clock at night, by morning you should have a mess of chicks. But write down the time the first chick hatches, and give yourself the time of 24, and we'll go into that with lockdown and all that count that time and then take those chicks out of your incubator add more water to your incubator not cold water but the water should be at least 100 degrees 99 to 100 degrees and uh, shut your incubator back up and let it go for at least another 24 hours after that dispose of the eggs that don't hatch. Okay. Joseph Sepp asks, what do you do with when, like after they hatch? Do you sell them, release them, eat them? What do you do? Alright. Um, after they hatch, you take care of them like you do baby chicks. You dip the beak in water, give them their first drink, release them into the brooder, Spread some feed down in a little tray or on the, the floor of the brooder so that they learn to eat on their own, and they will. They're very quick learners. They're not like a chicken or a, a turkey or something where you have to tap the food so that they are attracted to it. They'll find it. Uh, as far as releasing them, no. You can't release Katurnic quail into the wild. 
mainly because they're not native to our area. Actually, and they I think won't survive. They won't survive the neighborhood cats, the dogs, hawks, owls. I think possums and things like that. Okay. Okay. If they're bob white quail, yes, because bob white quail can fly. Paternix can fly, jump up, and fly short distances, but not fast or far enough that a predator can't get them. What do we do with them? What we do with them is we um, raise them up because they will have, they will start producing eggs at six weeks to eight weeks old. We will eat the eggs, we'll fry the eggs, we will pickle the eggs, we will hatch more from the eggs, and if you use a quail egg compared to a chicken egg, take four to five quail eggs will be compared to a chicken egg and you can use them in baking or recipes boil them they're great in salads for pickling quail eggs are just you'll be amazed at what you can do with a quail egg as far as the bird themselves we eat those you uh, when you clean them which I'll get into it with another video and show you how to prepare them. I'm not going to show it on camera, but I will explain it. There's other videos out there that shows the, the full thing. And our, uh, our family homestead doesn't uh, show the guts and gore of uh, process. Not that, we, not that we have a problem with it, it's just that we don't do it. A lot of people have a, pro or a problem seeing it. But we, we just don't do it. Okay, now Morris Patch of Haven Homestead, I believe. I apologize if I don't think I have your name correctly. Anybody, if I don't have your name right, you know, feel free to write the correction below if you'd like. Or ask another question and we'll figure it all out. But anyway, they ask, any tips on incubating? Yes, like I said, we're going to have uh, a full video on the what to do with the eggs in the incubators. The thing I recommend is when you're, oh, there it goes. <laughs> when you're incubating the eggs, um, I'll show you the stuff I do to preserve the eggs and get ready to put them in the incubator. Okay, the R of our being asked, what, why is it called a brooder? All right. Brood is what the mother chicken or hawk or quail or whatever they do set on the eggs. That's called a brood. That's when she goes broody or when they're brooding. And uh, a brooder is just something that replaces the mother after the chicks hatch. And it's very necessary because they have to be in a, a temperature of at least 90 degrees. Okay, Florentine Tice asks, how many times a year can you do this? Wow. Um, if you have, uh, they grow in six weeks to be full grown, you can do this a lot. If you hatch out a batch of chicks today, Within two weeks, I'd put another batch in the incubator. By the time those chicks hatch out, the ones in the brooder will be four weeks old, or approximately. And when they're when they're four weeks old, that's time for them to grow. Go in the grow out pen. Now, a grow out pen is a pen that you're going to have all your babies in, so they can get large enough so that they can start laying eggs. So I would say you could incubate eggs if you wanted to do that many. If you only got a small incubator and you're only going to do eight down at a time, then yeah, you could do it every two to three weeks and have chicks. But you're going to be constantly taking care of chicks. Well, if they want to sell sell them the if eggs you and them, all you that can, too. You can do that too, but I... Well, the going as price... As far as uh, a family of two, like Ruth and myself... Ruthie. <laughs> your name is Ruth. E. My middle you, name is E. I call Ruth you Ruth e. e. 
<laughs> but I was as far as our, her and I, uh, probably every four weeks or five, six weeks, you can hatch out a new brood. But I'm not peeling the eggs. <laughs> they make <laughs> quail eggs are actually easy to peel once they're. Don't believe it. Once they're boiled. <laughs> Pinocchio. But Don't say when that. When they're raw, they have a tough inner skin that you have to. Uh, They are hard to peel when you boil. They yeah. have a, a little, like a guillotine pair of scissors that will open quail eggs. So you, you need to look online and get some of those. Def, if you're gonna, they're, yeah. anywhere, they're anywhere from two to six bucks. If you're going to do quail, you definitely definitely you're need to do that. If you're going to eat raw quail eggs, you definitely want to have Or hard quail eggs. Have the scissors. Yeah, but there's a special surprise inside and it's worth it. You just, yeah, I didn't mean to, I'm sorry, honey. Right, you know I love you. <coughs> Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Nana Grace asks, do you have to clip the wings? And is it hard to tell the boys from the girls? No. Once, if you're, if you're raising the browns like I'm raising, Ooh. the males and females look totally different. And I explained the spotted chests on the females and the, the brown chestnut breasts on the males. It's not hard to tell the if you go to the white caternic, which I'll show you on the the browns of how to tell male and female with with the whites and that, which isn't hard either once you learn how to do it. Um, but as far as clipping the wings, no, you don't have to clip their wings. The only time that caternic quail are gonna flop around with their wings and is when they're exercising their wings and their legs. And they do that from maybe two to three days old to uh, probably about four weeks. After that, their bodies start getting too heavy to fly. They will jump straight up and flap, but by then they're going to be so used to you if you raise them where they're eye level with your cage, where they know who you are. All they're going to do with you is look for food and water. They're not going to uh, be afraid of you. I had quail, you could reach right in, the full grown quail, and they walk right up to you just like pets. You almost don't have the heart to kill them, but that's what God put them on the earth for. Now, how do you tell boys from the girls? The females have black spots all over their little brown breasts. And it's not a brown, dark brown, it's a, a tan color, so you'll notice the black spots on the tan breasts right away. And you'll see that coloration start coming out when they're about four to five weeks. By six weeks, you'll definitely know which ones are males because they'll be crowing and breeding the females at six weeks old. But I wouldn't take their eggs for hatching until after they're eight weeks old because then you know that within two, year, two weeks of breeding, you know you've got fertile eggs. And please don't think I'm mean to my husband because I cried when he told me he re was going to retire. Right? Remember I cried? When I was going to retire, I didn't cry. When, when he get, when he, I was joyful. When he came <laughs> home, I cried. I was so happy. Clay's my hero. He is definitely my I'm hero. I'm hero, baby. No, but he knows I love him. I really... Clay's like... He's changed my life. But anyway, I didn't want you to think I was being mean to him. But we do... We do uh, what do you call it? Batter. We batter. Banter. Banter. We don't ban. We banter. Ba banter. Say it again, doll. Banter. Yeah, we love each other. So we we definitely do. So I'm sorry I was picking on you, love. That's fine. Walsh Farms asks, can they survive on their own if turned loose? No. I Like I said in one of the other questions, Paternic quail are not native to the United States. We have way more predators than what uh, quail are used to in the desert area they come from. Where do they come from? Egypt. Oh, really? I Northern know Africa. And that's why you don't need a permit for them. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know that. Okay. Mad Mimi Crochet asks, are they Bob White? No, they're Katornik. There's a totally different... Bob White get to about 16 ounces 
or 17 ounce depending on the Bob White. You can get uh, if you buy the Georgia Giants they're a little bit bigger but Caternic grow from egg or hatched egg to six weeks old or full grown ready to be eaten and laying eggs where Bob White when they hatch it takes 20, 16 to 20 weeks just to get your first egg and then Caternic we breed, could cut we could cut off breed in, so if we if we do if we do cut off just just so you guys know okay go ahead Dal. Caternic um, breed in groups like a herd or a flock where Bob White breed male and female pairs only and during the breeding season with Bob White they will kill each other as far as the males during breeding season you have to keep Bob White's separated during the breeding season and, and in, in pairs and then it's up to you to figure out who its mate is and I guess the last the question basically is going to come from me because I think this is important to to say this there's three types of quail in there's lots of quail but you're but if you're a newbie you want to kind of stay away from Bob White because you're going to have to get a license and you have to have a license for California blue slate and all you, those you, kind of quail because you have to have a license for them too. You want to stick to kind of Quartornix and Barton quail are pets. They are not, they're like they're little teeny, tiny, tiny birdies. Barton quail when they're full grown are just a little bit bigger than your thumb. They're just, they're not a eating bird. So if you they're see. They're very, very tiny when they hatch. They're adorable, but they're not.